I've rolled the dice on AliExpress and I've gotten an AIPOE switch that was less than $100, but it's eight two and a half gig ports with a 10 gig SFP plus uplink. Have I lost my mind? We're gonna find out in this review. Okay, in the box, what do you get? You get an eight port switch, which in my case was fanless. It doesn't have to be fanless. We'll talk more about that in a minute. You get a power cord, you get a nifty little rack mount ear kit, and a business card. The business card is for Keeplink, which is uh, Shenzhen Keeplink Technology, which is in Shenzhen, China, which is pretty cool. There's a bunch of these that are cropping up that is four two and a half gig ports and two 10 gig ports or eight two and a half gig ports and one 10 gig port it's enabled by a new chipset basically there's a whole bunch of these under a whole bunch of different brands brands that you know and love but also these that are less than a hundred dollars us at the time that i ordered this which is i thought a pretty good deal but uh let's let's break it down because there are some caveats that we need to talk about all right first up for the money you can't beat it you get a 10 gigabit SFP plus port and eight two and a half gig ethernet ports. This is available in a PoE version and a non-PoE version. There's a four port version with two 10 gig uplinks. This is really designed for PoE so that you can do power over ethernet and like wireless access point distribution. These are scattered all around a warehouse. But as a desktop switch or a downstream switch, in my case, it's gonna be downstream of a 10 gig ethernet switch. This is actually pretty good. For me, this solves a couple of problems in my office, one of which is that I was an early adopter of 10 gig over copper, and so a lot of my 10 gigabit over copper ethernet switches don't support two and a half and five gig, and that means all of my two and a half gig clients now run at one gig, which kind of sucks. And before I splash out on like a 24 port two and a half gig ethernet switch, I thought I might try these as like a little work group switch. So here in the level one labs, having a little workbench, we're using our 10 gigabit uplink, plus all of our other two and a half gig ports. I wondered, would it work with one of these SFP plus to copper adapters? And the answer is yes. These are, uh, are actually called Computox which is like Computex, but not Computex at all. These are just generic 10 gigabit SFP plus adapters. Um, these are TP-Link compatible. Like that's what I ordered them as. And I'm happy to report that this works just fine. So this gives me a 10 gigabit uplink to my 10 gigabit um, Netgear switch from the dawn of time. It doesn't support two and a half or five gig. And then all eight of our ports will link up at two and a half gig. This is not managed. It's not even web managed. Although the chipset does actually support web management. There probably is a way to hack it on and enable it but I was very delighted that even though this thing is fanless I was not able to get it to overheat. I did use the FLIR thermal camera and when this switch has been fully loaded and running for eight hours it does get a little concerningly warm. I think that it might have been a mistake to leave out a fan from this if you're going to have a switch that is at like 90% utilization all the time. But if the thing is not being utilized, then it only uses three watts of power. At a fully idle switch at the wall, three watts of power. And like one and a half, two watts of that is probably overhead of the power supply. Most of the heat is coming from the power supply in that case, which is shockingly good for our Keeplink 8 port switch. Inside we find a pretty standard arrangement and a DC power brick. So the DC power brick is standard enough that if it ever died you could easily get a replacement. If you did want to run a fan in here there is nowhere to attach the fan. There's no uh, header that has actually been added to the system. If you're handy with a soldering iron you could certainly add a fan. Not a speed controlled fan mind you, but you could add a fan. And there are mounting holes for a fan, so that's nice. <laughs> okay, I've been using this a couple of weeks now, and I've noticed a lot more of these are showing up elsewhere. There's different configurations of this, different brands. Some of them have the built-in power brick, some of them have a separate power brick, some of them are power over ethernet, some of them aren't. I wanna show you what I did to modify this one to add a fan, because I did add a problematic SFP Plus adapter, and I could get the SFP Plus adapter itself to throttle, even while the rest of the switch was not throttling. Fortunately, this chassis has a cutout for a fan and mounting holes and screws, and it even has headers on the PCB to make that easy. And I'll also show you a couple of things to check for if you get one of the other models, because it turns out that there's some interesting stuff. So when I was doing the thermal footage, I noticed that it was particularly good at thermal dissipation. And that's because underneath these two heat sinks, there's actually a thermal pad that is gonna conduct heat to the metal case and that's also 
why it sounds a little less hollow than you would expect. So if you get one of these, just eyeball it from the side, look in, and see if you've got a thermal pad underneath your two main chips with heat sinks connecting to the bottom. Now the place where this one doesn't have a thermal pad is our SFP Plus slot. There's nothing connecting it to the case. It might be okay fanless if it was connecting to the case. I mean, it depends on the SFP Plus module that you're using, but some of the copper to uh, 10 gigabit SFP Plus to copper adapters that I have will work without throttling. Some of them won't, which is interesting. So solder in the two pin header here next to this choke, which also does run quite toasty. And then I'm using a Noctua resistor cable, just a four pin resistor cable on that into a standard 1U rack mount fan. And that's it. There is actually mounting holes at the side here for a 1U rack mount fan, but you don't have a lot of clearance. So if you want to get a fan for this, because you're adventurous and you're a fan of inexpensive switches, well, it's 40 millimeters, it's a standard 1U size fan, but the depth that you're working with is only a maximum of about 21, 22 millimeters. I'd go with 20 millimeters of thickness. Our uh, industrial fan that I've gotten here is a little larger, but I've just sort of hacked it in with the Noctua resistor adapter. It's good enough. Now, unfortunately, that does mean that it is not perfectly silent, but, you know, check out your thermal pads. If you've got thermal pads between the PCB and the case and you're not gonna run an SFP Plus adapter that generates a lot of heat, you're probably fine. Just depends. And so that, that works for brands other than Keeplink because they're all gonna be the same PCB K0801W U31V1.0 or maybe V1.1, which fixes some issues. Or heck, maybe we can just talk into including an extra thermal pad underneath the SFP Plus port. I don't know, something. In terms of other testing, like does it work with Realtek? Does it work with the buggy Intel i225V adapters? Does it work with the good Intel i225V adapters? I didn't find any performance dropout or bugs. Uh, it does weirdly fluctuate in uh, just Windows SMB transfers from 236 to 250 megabytes per second. That's the two and a half gig ethernet side of things. And that may or may not have been temperature throttling related because it seemed like it did it more when the case was on than when it was off on my workbench. But still, this thing costs less than $100. Uh, if you want to trade up a little bit, Microtik has their new 8 port with dual 10 gig SFP Plus that is web managed. And it is a better device in every possible way that you can measure devices, except for the Microtik has a fan. And this is fanless and completely silent. So as long as you're not overtaxing it, basically it's okay. I actually expected the difference between overtaxed and not overtaxed for heating to be these little SFP plus 10 gig adapters because these actually use a lot of power and sort of do dump a lot of heat into the printed circuit board but the layout in here is pretty good and it didn't contribute to any sort of problems with this unit so there's not really much else to say. It's an ethernet switch, you plug it in and it does stuff. If you need eight two and a half gig ports, this is great. If you can get by with four two and a half gig ports, the version that has dual 10 gig might be a better option. There's also a version of this, not from Keeplink as far as I can tell, but that I saw on AliExpress that deals with VLANs. Like you can toggle VLAN support on and off. It itself doesn't really handle VLANs through a web GUI as far as I can tell. There's just a physical switch that's basically preserve VLANs or don't preserve VLANs. So if you set up VLANs, you could set the ports up as trunking or untrunking, I suppose. I don't really know how that would work without giving you some sort of configuration option. If you've got a complex VLAN infrastructure where you want these four ports on one VLAN and another four ports on another VLAN, maybe don't do that. But other than that, it just is a dumb switch with a 10 gig ethernet uplink for less than $100, you're all set. In fact, you're probably gonna spend like $30 to $50 on the 10 gigabit SFP adapter versus the uh, platform for your switch. So. Yeah, I don't know. Quickie. This version is also a PoE switch, so you can run your access points or whatever else you got, but I don't plan on using it as a PoE version. It was actually only $20 more to get the PoE version. So, yeah, neat. I'm one of those level one. This has been a quick look at my first look at a Keeplink product ever. Even though it is a metal case, it's easy to bend with your fingers if you squeeze. It's kind of thin metal. Be careful. Be careful when you're mounting it in a rack. Oh, I'm going to use this as a shelf. No. No, you're not going to use it as a rack shelf at all. It, it, it'll bend. I'm Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums. Woo! I can't wait for that Microtik review. <laughs>